think we are live now. Hey, hi everyone. A very warm welcome to each one of you. I hope you all are doing well and having a great time participating in the weather forecast AI challenge so far. For those unattended, uh, we at DeFi recently collaborated with Alibaba and Tianchi for this highly impactful public welfare challenge uh, that is aimed towards solving the problem caused by climate changes that in and out regularly affects the life of all of us. Uh, so the first round of the challenge is already over and as some of you may know, the results are also announced a couple of days back. Big congratulations to all of the teams who made it to the final round and a kudos to all of you like who came forward to contribute to this highly public uh, welfare impactful challenge. Uh, coming towards the agenda for the session, uh, today we are sort of trying the new format which our community had suggested us in the past. Uh, basically, we uh, all together watch a pre-recorded session shared by our friends from Alibaba and Tianchi, uh, wherein like they'll be sharing their professional understanding of the intelligent weather forecast, its application, and the impact in the real world. And towards the end, we have two special guests with us, uh, Steve from Alibaba and Chanukya, who is the co-founder of T5. I hope like you all will make the most out of this session. And uh, without further ado, I'll start presenting the video and uh, let's, let's watch it along. Hi everyone, I'm Xiaohui. I'm from AIR's team in Alibaba Damo Academy. Today, I'm very glad to introduce this AI-enabled radar forecasting to everyone. And the weather forecast usually can be divided into different types according to uh, different time horizons. From forecasting to short-term weather forecast, extended range weather forecast, seasonal forecast, decadal weather forecast and climate weather forecast. As the forecast horizon increases, the forecast confidence also becomes lower. And today we will focus on the now casting, which largely used uh, dependent on the AI models to forecast the future zero to six hours rainfall. Um, and uh, the other types of weather forecasts usually use the uh, physics-based numerical weather prediction models. Besides the now casting, the artificial intelligence model can also be applied into other domains of, of weather and climate prediction, like in our renewable energy forecast. Uh, the AI model can usually help us to correct the numerical weather predictions predicted um, wind and solar power, uh, so to tell the uh, to predict the future amount, uh, the amount of solar and uh, wind power that going to be generated in the next day. Also, the AI model can be applied to post-process the NWP model outputs to make it more accurate. And it can also help to classify different weather phenomena based on the satellite images. In this slide, it shows a paper published in 2019 on nature that tells us that how AI can beat the state-of-the-art physics model in terms of ANSO forecast. On the plot, the red line shows the deep learning model forecast. It uses a very a simple CNN model. And all the other lines are physics-based model. The plot shows that physics-based model, uh, the correlation scale, drops below 0.5 after 12 months and the CNN model is able to forecast uh, higher than 0.5 correlation scale up to 18 months. So it shows the potential of AI model in beating the physics model in the ANSOL forecast. The ECMWF, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, is the leading the world's leading weather forecast center, and they in their roadmap uh, for the next ten years, they already put a lot of emphasis on the importance of AI. 
not from the and the showing on this on this slide it shows that the AI will take, play a very important role in the whole workflow of the weather forecast generation from the observations uh, like the observation data cleaning to data assimilation and to uh, various component physics components in the market forecast model and the data post processing so in the entire flow workflow of the forecast generation the AI will um, uh, will play its part and today our uh, as our focus is on the radar now casting I will first briefly introduce what is radar now casting Radar nowcasting is trying to use the historical radar reflectivity of past n hours to forecast the future m hours with radar reflectivity. And uh, the traditionally, uh, people use optic flow method. This method is trying to predict the future movement of clouds. But it cannot predict the cloud formation, development, and the dissipation. Therefore, its performance after one hour is going to be very bad. So we mentioned radar reflectivity, but what is radar reflectivity? It is the amount of transmitted power returned to the radar receiver and can be used to detect precipitation, evaluate storm structure, and determine hail potential. The table on the right shows the strong correlation between the radar reflectivity and the rainfall rate. So the higher values of radar reflectivity usually indicates the higher amount of rainfall. The plot on the left shows the spatial coverage of China new generation radar network. So besides the radar reflectivity, uh, there is a new type of uh, radar called polar metric radar. It provides more information than just radar reflectivity, such as differential reflectivity space a uh, specific differential phase these two uh, variables can tell us the microphysics information about the uh, clouds or the droplets so it's a but it remains an issue or question about how can we fully use of this in extra information to improve the cloud for uh, to improve the now casting this figure uh, shows the history of development of AI models that are used in radar now casting. In 2015, Shi et al. proposed uh, the COM LSTM. It was a very innovative idea to uh, treat the rainfall forecast problem as the spatial and temporal sequence problem. The COM LSTM model can effectively make use of the historical information to forecast the future sequence. And to 2017, that one at all, uh, they proposed a uh, pred RN and uh, they include, introduced the spatial temporal memory to improve upon the COM LSTM. Until 2020, the Google research they proposed MedNet. They include multiple data sources, including uh, radar and satellite images, longitude and latitude and time information, and they claim their forecast uh, can be up to 8 hours. AI Earth uh, used a different uh, now casting model structure than previously mentioned. We use the U2Net model. Why we are not using the previous mentioned model is because we are doing the now cast for the entire China. And the previous mentioned model is not able to process such big image covering the whole China. And this uh, is an animation that uh, shows uh, our AI Earth radar now casting platform. And you guys are welcome to visit our website to check out uh, if our forecast is accurate or, not, accurate or not. We did our own evaluation and our uh, results shows that our forecast is better than optical flow method, especially when the reflectivity is higher than 35 dBZ. And in the development of the uh, radar now cast system, we found there are some issues. For example, the visualization issues. Previously, our forecast results is very ambiguous, as the plots in the middle shows. 
it's different from the, uh, the ground truth or the actual radar reflectivity. So we scan to learn the uh, radar reflectivity images to produce a more realistic radar reflectivity forecast. Also, we add Himawari 8 satellite data because we think the Himawari 8 satellite data has different multiple channels that can measure different physical properties of the atmosphere and can provide some extra information than river reflectivity. So we snagged some uh, channels uh, and did some experiments and it shows uh, accuracy improvement by adding the satellite data. We also include the numerical weather prediction data uh, to push our nowcast from 0 to 6 hours to 0 to 3 hours to 0 6 hours. We select U and V uh, component, wind component, specific humidity and surface pressure from the numerical weather prediction model data. And uh, after doing that, our 6 hour forecast is as accurate as our 3 hour forecast uh, that we have previously. As radar reflectivity is not the end product of our nowcasting system. In reality, people more care more about precipitation or rainfall. So uh, there is one last step to convert the radar reflectivity to precipitation. A traditional mass dynamic ZI relationship method uh, needed to calculate the coefficient k A and B to convert the radar reflectivity uh, to the rainfall amount. And we compared the two methods. One is end-to-end -end method that used the historical radar reflectivity to forecast the future rainfall directly, or use two-stage method to first uh, forecast the future radar reflectivity, then based on the radar reflectivity to forecast the future precipitation. Our comparison shows that our end-to-end -end method is better than the two-stage method and better than the dynamic ZI relationship method. And that's all for my today's presentation. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on intelligent weather forecasts for better life. First, I'd like to show my thanks to Alibaba Cloud for organizing this webinar. I'm Tian leader of weather forecast algorithm group in Calf Cloud Technology. My research focuses on deep learning for weather forecasts, I'm excited to share my thoughts on intelligent weather forecasts and to briefly introduce air quality forecasts here. Before getting to the main topic, I'd like to give you a short introduction to the company I work for, Color Clouds Technology. Founded in 2014, it always aims at improving our lives with AI. Our Color Clouds weather app was released in 2014 to provide weather forecasts for people, especially pre precipitation forecasting and air quality forecasting. My sharing today contains four main parts. Firstly, I'm going to talk about how we could make innovations in weather forecasting, especially with the help of deep learning. Then I will introduce the background of air quality forecasting and show how we use graph neural network and GRU to model PM2.5 forecasting. Where could innovations in weather forecast come from? This slide shows the weather forecast process from collecting observations to meeting users' demands. There are a variety of observations, such as data from weather stations, balloons, radars, satellites, and so on. These data are fed into various models to generate many meteorological products, including temperature, wind, precipitation, forecasting, alerts, and the real analysis data, which help users in making decisions and do good to our society. We can try to innovate in each stage of the whole process. Roughly, I think innovations in weather forecasting can be classified into two kinds. One is to improve the accuracy of weather forecasting by developing new models or taking more observations as input. The other kind is that 
We combine weather data and the industrial data to provide customized weather forecasting, which is able to save costs and improve efficiency for industrials. Here is a list of interesting problems suitable for deep learning, such as air quality forecasting, weather forecasting, post-processing of numerical weather prediction, reanalysis of historical data. It is noteworthy that WeatherBench is a dataset based on ERA5 reanalysis data. It is a attempt to make long-term weather forecasts comparable to numerical weather predictions in a data-driven way. Also, deep learning is promising improved weather forecasts. A number of challenges remain. In some situations, there is still a lack of observation data for training deep learning models. Extreme weather events are vital but hard to predict. Since our system is complex and dynamic, we have to incorporate domain knowledge to guide deep learning. Also, it's difficult to deal with various types of meteorological data. In the second part, I'm going to take air quality forecast as an example to show how we use deep learning. Let's get started with background of air quality forecast. There are several air pollutants in everyday life, but for simplicity, we only take PM2.5 concentration into consideration. What is PM2.5? It refers to tiny particles with diameters smaller than 2.5 microns, and it is very harmful to human health. Visibility suffers when PM2.5 concentration is high, as shown in the picture. PM2.5 particles are suspended in the air, so their transportation and diffusion are tightly related to weather condition. When weather condition is stable, those particles are hard to diffuse, then accumulate instead. But they can be transported by wind from one place to another, as shown in this demo. Air pollutants flow eastward, and at the same time, the wind blows from west to east. Besides the wind, there are other key factors of PM2.5 forecasting, including humidity, precipitation, and the planetary boundary layer height. Humidity promotes the generation of PM2.5 particles, while precipitation helps clear those particles. Additionally, PM2.5 concentration is inversely related to PBR height. Now, we are familiar with the relation between PM2.5 and the weather condition. I'm going to talk about how we model PM2.5 forecasting by graph neural network and the GRU. What kinds of data do we have? PM2.5 concentrations from air monitoring stations and uh, numeric weather forecast data. The motion of PM2.5 is also a dynamic process, so we need to deal with spatial temporal dependency. Let's have a look at the stations in the image. They are unevenly distributed, which makes it difficult to handle spatial relation for CNN. Therefore, it is a good option to build a graph with cities as nodes and the transport passes as edges. Meteorological attributes of nodes and edges are shown in Table 1 and Table 2. We take the average as PM2.5 concentration of cities. In graph neural network, it's convenient to consider transportation of PM2.5 from one city to another by aggregating neighbor nodes information through edges. In order to capture short-term and long-term interactions of a city, we use GRU. In this framework, X denotes PM2.5 concentration and PQ and G denote graph information. At time t, we take PM2.5 concentration and graph representation as input to predict PM2.5 concentration at the next step. Putting GNN and GRU together, we arrive at PM2.5 GN. Let's go through the algorithm details. First of all, we have as input observed PM2.5 concentration X. Node features P, 
Add Features Q and Adjacent Metrics G. The target is to predict PM2.5 contraction in 72 hours. At time t, for every node, we take node features, neighbor node features, corresponding edge features as input of GN to obtain aggregate information through edges. Then, node features and aggregated inf information are processed by GRU to predict the hidden state of uh, every node, with which PM2.5 concentration at time t is derived by MLP. Things like this go on recurrently until we get all predictions. Parameters of GN, GRU, MLP are shared across all nodes. The correspondence between PM2.5 dynamic process and PM2.5 GNN are illustrated below. In a nutshell, spatial relations are encoded by GNN and the temporal relation as well aggregated information are processed by GRU. We train our models on a four-year data set, and the task is to make PM2.5 forecasting in 72 hours. Let's have a look at the results of different models. GRU performs worse since it ignores interactions between nodes. PM2.5 GNN performs better than GCLSTM because influence, the influence of wind is explicitly contained in edge construction. Also, the ablation study shows that there is a significant drop in performance for models without PBR height. This slide shows a case study of dataset 3. Forecasting series of PM2.5 is better matched ground truth for PM2.5 GNN. Our work was published as a post paper in 6 Visual 2020, and you can read our paper and codes for more details if you are interested. That's all. Thank you for your attention. For the rainfall uh, forecast, actually Nowcast has been should be the most accurate. But Nowcast has the issue that can only provide the valid uh, rainfall forecast up to six hours. There might not be enough time for people to react. So we still need to rely on the physics-based numerical weather prediction model, uh, which can provide us uh, a one-day-ahead forecast. The physics-based model may not be as accurate as the nowcast. Uh, so we need to combine them together uh, to make the warning. And also, the AI model can help to um, correct the biases in the model forecast. There is another, also another uh, technology uh, used in the numerical weather prediction model called ensemble forecast. Ensemble forecast is basically uh, start is trying to uh, let the NMDP model start with different, slightly different initial conditions. As we know that the uh, the true state of the atmosphere is never known. So our initial conditions is never going to be 100% accurate. But initial conditions has very large impact on the future uh, forecast. Uh, that's why we need an ensemble. An ensemble can help us to uh, give us the probability of the future uh, event. And we can try to use the AI to uh, give us better uh, probability based on the ensemble uh, model outputs. Yeah, that's my uh, answer. Intelligent weather forecasting can definitely improve effectiveness of precipitation warning, especially of short-term warning. Actually, long-term warning still relies on traditional numerical weather prediction. In the case of general torrential rains last month, alerts were issued in advance thanks to numerical weather forecasting. But it's still very difficult to provide warnings for extreme precipitation events hours in advance. Because the Earth system is so complex that weather system in nature possesses chaotic behaviors. Fortunately, real-time observations from radars and satellites 
make it possible to detect extreme precipitation events. Whether or not to issue precipitation alerts is usually determined by data of historical accumulated precipitation and the precipitation forecasting of the following hours. Once total precipitation exceeds the given threshold, warnings will be sent. The data of historical accumulated precipitation can be obtained from weather stations and AI-based radar forecasting can be used to estimate precipitation in the following hours. So with the help of AI, we can send warnings effectively within two hours. The technology behind is the close correlation between radar echoes and the precipitation. And the radar forecasting can be achieved by training deep learning models against tons of radar images. So besides the weather app, there are also many other uh, applications, uh, such as in the renewable uh, power forecast that AI can help to uh, make the uh, forecast of the future solar and wind power generation. And also for the aviation uh, industry, they need the weather forecast so that the airplane can take off and landing safely because if there is a strong convective system it's not safe for the uh, airplane to take off or land. Also for the utility company that they need um, the weather forecast as there might be lightning uh, strike on the uh, transmission lines or there could be typhoon uh, or there could be some other uh, weather uh, uh, the extreme weather that caused the transmission line uh, broken and caused the blackout, and uh, they can so that they can uh, determine well, which area that could have this potential um, blackout. They can send people uh, ahead of time to fix the the the, the transmission line faster. Yeah. And uh, also the insurance company might need also need the weather forecast uh, too, so that they can tell their customer uh, where there could be uh, flash floods, that they can avoid going to that area to uh, uh, pre uh, reduce their loss. Intelligent weather forecasting has a broad impact on many areas, such as transportation, agriculture, airline, and disaster prevention. On highways, precipitation forecasting can remind drivers to be cautious to heavy rains and wet roads. Moreover, precipitation forecasting helps car sharing companies estimate user demands and better redistribute cars to provide serv services for more users. For pilots, they often refer to radar forecasting to decide if the weather is good enough for taking off or landing. In agriculture, detailed and accurate weather forecasts can help farmers to make the right decisions such as whether, when, and how much to irrigate. In disaster prevention, the accumulated precipitation data and the precipitation forecasting can guide the government to alert people or evacuate people in time. Because Precipitation forecasting updates very frequently. It's very helpful for people who are in danger. So AI can, uh, the leading AI technology can also be used in the development of the uh, numeric weather prediction model. So there are some researchers that are trying to replace the uh, some physics components in the MWP model, such as a radiation scheme, a uh, planetary boundary scheme. Because the radiation scheme uh, runs very slowly, and some researchers trying to replace the radiation scheme with a new network, and the new network plus the GPU can uh, accelerate the radiation calculation to reduce the amount of time uh, of a running MWP model. Also, there are um, uh, people that are trying to use the AI model to do the satellite data retrieval. 
so use the uh, uh, AI to post to process the satellite images to learn uh, the uh, some uh, physical properties of atmosphere like the humidity, uh, temperature, or clouds uh, from the satellite data. Yes, for sure. Some of the technologies have been rather popular. Take colorful clouds, which I know best as an example. With more than 5 million monthly active users, we offer every user minute to minute, kilometer to kilometer precipitation forecasting in two hours. And our accuracy is over 80%. Our rain notification often prevents users from rain. If you know about weather forecasting, you may understand that it is an incredible achievement. And this achievement comes from our constant efforts on radar denoising and radar forecasting. AI models, especially uh, deep learning models, is, are very powerful uh, when there are enormous amount of data. And in the domain of meteorology, we have a uh, tremendous amount, amount of data, uh, satellite data. And um, I think we can uh, reconstruct, try to reconstruct the three-dimensional uh, wind and thermodynamic structure of the atmosphere by using satellite data and the deep learning models. And we can use the uh, measurements from uh, weather balloons, LiDAR, and wind profiler, which measures the vertical uh, profile of the atmosphere. As for many uh, weather forecasting problems, uh, uh, one uh, critical challenge is uh, we don't know the true state of atmosphere. So I think it's going to be very meaningful if we can uh, try our best to uh, get the uh, three-dimensional structure of the atmosphere. And that, that's the first one. I think the second one is for the uh, sub-seasonal to seasonal forecast. As the forecast uh, is uh, related to the somewhere far away, uh, so, and the physics-based model may not be very good at uh, predicting uh, to do the sub-seasonal to seasonal forecast as the forecast uncertainties uh, grow with time. And we, already, we have already uh, seen that uh, the AI model can beat the uh, physics-based model in ANSO forecast. I think for other sub-seasonal to seasonal forecast, we can try to use deep learning model and to see if we can achieve better results than a uh, physics-based model. There are many valuable things that we need to work on. Recently, extreme weather events have caused tremendous economic costs and claimed lives. How to make full use of weather forecasting to reduce loss and save lives becomes more and more important. It's valuable to provide more refined weather warnings to people which requires us to make finer forecasts both spatially and uh, temporally. Besides weather forecasting, AI-based long-term weather forecasting will attract increasing attention in the future. As far as I see, effective combination of deep learning and uh, numerical methods is more likely to further improve long-term weather prediction. In addition, Weather forecasting and solar radiation forecasting are significant for wind power stations and solar power stations to predict how much electricity will be generated. A, a slight improvement in forecast accuracy would lead to huge economic values, and it, it is likely to be achieved by combining multiple observations and uh, numerical weather forecasting data in deep learning. Awesome. Uh, I hope like you all enjoyed walking along the session. Uh, I'm glad to see like uh, the chats and the questions that are coming in. Uh, I think I bring on channel and Steve, both of them, so that we all they all can answer the uh, questions and your doubts. Uh, yeah. Uh, so like going through the chat, Mariam says like uh, we are so excited about the challenge. Glad to hear that, Mariam. Uh, 
she also had one question i think with steve uh addressed as well uh if uh like steve you want to add anything else to it if a dashboard is on another platform now uh, like you know is it possible like if they can uh uh, deployed on BI Alibaba Cloud. Do they get any points uh, for that as well? While while the evaluations were going on, Steve, if you could like you know throw some light on it. Yeah, I think uh, Steve has already addressed that question. Uh, so just to elaborate a bit more, um, so there is twenty five percent of the points uh, that covers for usage of Alibaba Cloud credits. So that's something that's there. So uh, if you don't, I mean. Uh, it's it's fine if you don't want to use it, but that's that's a segregation of points uh, that's there out, yeah. And unless uh, Steve wants to add something else to it, uh, Steve, do you want to add something, or we are good with that? Yeah, I think uh, we're good. So uh, I, the only thing I want to add is that uh, actually we are uh, we have a following uh, competitions currently. We are also. Uh, yeah, having another uh, AI competition, which is algorithm competition uh, mm -hmm. on Tenshi platform, you can check that, and we will soon launch uh, <coughs> other competitions uh, uh, next month and in the coming uh, months. So um, you can uh, check Alibaba Cloud website and check the Tenshi side yeah. to join other competitions, and the world, there will be a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, to become award winners um, and uh, use your um, algorithms, use your inno innovation to solve problems. Yeah, thank you all the, your, the uh, participants to join our uh, challenge and uh, to watch this uh, webinar. Great, yeah. Uh, we, we also have a couple of more questions. Uh, like Madhuri asked in the beginning, like, you know, uh, she, want, she wants to basically, you know, like, you know, where can, uh, like, you know, advanced models can be hosted, like, which can operate at scale and, like, you know, at the same time have high inference cost. Uh, if, like, either of you can, you know, address that question. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in all the likelihood, so uh, whatever uh, we have heard from both the speakers, uh, they might have been using uh, Alibaba Cloud for deploying their models and also making requests uh, to the model endpoints to use it in the production. So technically you can use any, any cloud service, but at the same time, you need to ensure that uh, the model runs optimally so that you you consume, you optimize your uh, development as well as uh, uh, inference costs, right? So that's where the data engineering comes into perspective where you sort of optimize the operational costs and also the computational costs. And uh, maybe Steve, do you want to add something on uh, how people optimize their uh, production costs using Alibaba Cloud? Yeah, so uh, we're offering um, to the public um, some services uh, regarding AI and big data. Uh, so for example, the Pi, I mentioned uh, um, um, yeah, then the Q&A, so uh, it's uh, a platform for, uh, so the platform for AI, um, which is uh, a one-stop uh, <coughs> product that helps you to train and deploy your uh, machine learning models. And also we have, uh, um, we are offering uh, services like uh, translation, uh, like the speech, uh, recognition services on alibabacloud.com so you can check uh, other uh, services. And uh, by the way, so um, in October, we're gonna have another um, another webinar to, um, to introduce our uh, AI services uh, with DeFi. So uh, you can uh, keep updated and uh, hope you can join that webinar. Sure, sure. We'll be looking forward to that. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, I think on the rest of the questions you have already addressed, uh, but for the interest of the public, maybe uh, Yesh can read them out and also answer sure. the questions. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I think like uh, there was one question from Aruna and like, you know, uh, this this question was basically asked by a couple of members in the past as well. Like, is it mandatory to use uh, Alibaba cloud services for the challenge? Uh, I think like as Steve addressed, like uh, you know, it's not uh, necessarily required to use Alibaba Cloud services, 
but uh, you get some additional points like you know for using it uh, during the evaluation at, uh, in the final round so yeah i think like that's pretty much about it uh wahid also like asked one question um uh, is it necessary to compare the results on different model uh, uh i think like uh like you know steve, uh, wahid, as, as steve mentioned uh and like can you also got credit uh uh like you know uh, it's it's not required like you know uh but you get ad additional points from the judges like you know uh during the evaluation as like you know it's not an algorithm competition but sort of an innovation challenge uh that is there uh yeah i think these were the two questions uh i think there is one more question from marian yeah. which just came in uh i'll read it out should we implement the final model at production level on alibaba or does it suffice to sketch the available services for production if it's, either of you um, yeah. yeah i think that uh, this is also not required so i mean that it's not required to uh make your final model at production level However, uh, we will, cause we will um, address the um, whether it, it can can be scaled, scaled, and whether it is um, feasible. So your idea and your your innovation is feasible. So if you have a demo, that will be good. And yeah. if you have uh, if you make your model at production level, that will be better. So you will get more points for that, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I think uh, that's that's uh, a very valuable input. So, I mean, the model may not be at the production level when when we are talking about production. We are talking about the industry production where there could be thousands or millions of requests. So, having a MVP would always be good, which is a minimal viable demo uh, using the services. I think that will be great. Um, yeah, and it will it will always uh, incur the browning points as Steve has mentioned. So, yeah. Cool, cool, perfect. Yeah, I think like uh, this is pretty much about this question. One final question, like you know, which which I wanna ask in the interest of the community. Any any tips or suggestions, like you know, uh, which you wanna give away for 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 all the participants, uh, or any focus point they should be focusing on the final round. If uh, either of you can, like you know, share your thoughts and suggestions on it. Maybe Steve can go. Steve. Uh... So can you repeat that question? Yeah, like any suggestions or tips for uh, the participants for the final round from your end? Okay. Um. So you mean the um and suggestion? Oh, um. I think that uh, um just improve your um the ideas and your if you have models. I think this improve your model training, um, uh, in the first round, and uh, um. Use it's better to because this is an innovation competition. So it's uh, um, I think that uh, training valid model is used uh, is uh, required. But also we hope that you use uh, different ways to demonstration to demonstrate your uh, your innovation. Uh, for example, uh, a working demo is the best way. Um, if you cannot make it at the production level, so if, then you you have a working demo is a very good. But also, um, you can use um, a video um, to uh, demonstrate uh, how it depends on what you are making. So video may also work and uh, may also help to to help the judges to understand what uh, uh, you are doing and how. Um, innovative it is so um yeah try to use different ways to to demonstrate um your innovation and uh, to show that how you use ai to solve the problems um related to weather forecast yeah yeah i think that's that's great and also yeah. probably like you know bring in some commercial or uh, social value to the entire uh uh, idea. I think that's that's also uh, covers a significant portion of it. I think that that's uh, that's very well put. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Steve, for that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah. I think like you know that's pretty much for the question. Uh, and I think like you know we can wrap it up. Uh, like thank you again, like you know Chanak and Steve for uh, taking out your time and you know doing this Q and A. Uh, and I hope like you know all the members enjoyed the Q and A and like, you know, the entire session. Uh, thanks again, everyone, like, you know, for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed the session. And 
uh, wish you a good day ahead. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.